Hello, everyone, and welcome to Literary Tales. I'm your host, Paul Kraus, and in this episode, we begin exploring the works of the great Athenian dramatist Aristophanes by examining his great comedy, The Wasps. Aristophanes' comedy, The Wasps, is the first extensive and thorough work of political and social criticism in the Western literary tradition. It is also a battle of the generations, but it ends not how one would expect it. The two main characters are also linked <clears throat> to the tyrant Cleon, an Athenian general who ascended to popular acclaim after defeating Sparta at the Battle of Sphacteria in 425 BC during the Peloponnesian War and became the first leader of Athens from the ascendant commercial class. Philocleon, whose name in Greek literally means lover of Cleon, comes into conflict with his son, Betelocleon, whose name in Greek means hater of Cleon. During the opening moments of the play, we are made to sympathize with Philocleon because his son ridicules him as insane and describes him as akin to a rodent. My father's got into the kitchen and he's scurrying about like a rat. Keep an eye on the waste pipe and see that he doesn't get out that way. In describing his father as a rodent, Betelocleon is set up intentionally by Aristophanes as the radical. But he will later reverse this image and show Philocleon to be the radical and Betelocleon as the pious and patriotic son, thus subverting the traditional imagery and notion of the older generation being traditional and family-oriented, while the younger generation is loose in morals and simply concerned with material pleasure and prestige. Aristophanes turns this image on its head over the course of the play. Although Athens was still a democracy during Cleon's rule, Aristophanes penetrates the veil of political propaganda and asserts that Cleonic Athens was, in fact, tyrannical. It was tyrannical because it had become dominated by the politics of wealth and pleasure. It was tyrannical because the family had been destroyed and the demagogic state had swept into the vacuum. Cleonic Athens was tyrannical because of the collapse of filial piety and the domination of politics and human-to-human -human relationships by wealth, the pursuit of pleasure, and the materialism that wealth and pleasure entail. Showing his astute political skill, Aristophanes, through the speeches, criticizes the Athenian Imperium. During the infamous trial scene between son and father, Betelocleon critiques Philocleon's worldview and practices. They are practices that produce degeneracy and weakness rather than strength and fortitude. Furthermore, through the speech of Betelocleon, Aristophanes attacks the ascendant commercial way of political life. Now tell me what advantages you gain from your dominion over all Greece, he asks his father. Philocleon responds by saying, well, for one thing, we, we see all the boys in the nude when they come up for inspection. Here, Aristophanes links wealth and power with licentious lust and pederasty, the latter of which had become a dominant practice among the wealthy elite in Athens in the late 5th century BC. There is no truly happy way to live this life of material pleasure, as Aristophanes will come to assert later. In fact, this life of material pleasure, which doesn't actually produce happiness, though we claim it produces happiness, is what leads to the destruction of filial, of filial warmth, the very cornerstone of the polis and political life. 
In critiquing what has become of the Athenian political system, Babylacleon says, The people you elect to rule over you, because you're taken in by their speeches. And on top of that, there are bribes they get from subject cities, 300,000 drachmas at a time, extorted by threats and intimidation. Aristophanes is critiquing here the Athenian practice of extortionist imperialism through and through. No one can miss the obvious, hence why Cleon hated Aristophanes, and the two men came into conflict regularly before Cleon's death. The critical speech given by Betelic Cleon contrasts so substantially from the speech of the Athenian delegates in Thucydides' history of the Peloponnesian War, who assert in that famous moment, we did not gain this empire by force. It came to us at a time when you, speaking to the Spartans, were unwilling to fight on to the end against the Persians. And at this time, our allies came to us on their own accord and begged us to lead them. While Thucydides wrote after Aristophanes, the mentality of the Athenian delegates presented by Thucydides was the mentality of Athenian exceptionalism that Aristophanes skewered and undressed in the Wasps. Once we accept the reality that Aristophanes was undertaking a heroic attempt at political criticism never before seen in Western literature, we could come to appreciate his great insight that when tyranny is threatened, it lashes out at its critics with charges of conspiracy and tyranny in return. For many of us living in the 21st century, that might sound very familiar. Things, apparently, don't change over time. When Betelacleon threatens the pleasurable and licentious life of his father, the chorus boldly and ridiculously proclaims treason and treachery now it is clear, tyranny as ever strikes from the rear. And here I hope we can see the comedic genius and construction from Aristophanes' part. Betelacleon responds, It's always tyranny and conspiracy with you people, isn't it? It should be noted here from Aristophanes' purview that those who are actually tyrannical and conspiratorial are always the first to lash out the charges of tyranny and conspiracy against those whom they despise. After all, the setting of the wasps is in a court, a trial, but it is not Betelacleon and Philocleon that are on trial. It is Athens herself on trial, through the dazzling criticism of Aristophanes, who is interrogating it. In the first act of the Wasps, Aristophanes engages in some, of the ro in some of the most robust and scandalous political criticism, which remain unrivaled until St. Augustine's deconstruction of Rome in the City of God. Aristophanes accuses his native Athens of engaging in extortionist imperial politics. He asserts that the licentious and pederastic way of life Developing in Athens weakens her and makes her a slave instead of being strong and free. He also mocks the Athenian justice system as being unconcerned with innocence and justice, though the justice system claims to be concerned with upholding innocence and justice. Aristophanes also suggests that through the sophistic speeches and money of the political leaders, that that is the only thing that matters to judge and jury. As long as someone is flattered and given a bribe, the justice system will always act and rule in their interests. After all, the setting of the wasps is in a court, a trial. But as mentioned, we must look beyond the characters on trial. It is not Betelacleon and Philocleon upon closer inspection. It is Athens on trial. 
The conclusion of the wasps is equally shocking. Philocleon is seen pleasuring himself with a slave girl. Babylocleon frees her from his father's lustful grip. Philocleon slaps Babylocleon across the face in return. But the two are eventually reconciled, and Philocleon comes to see the heirs of his ways. In an image that is reminiscent of the greatest image of filial piety in the ancient world, Aeneas carrying his father out of the burning ashes of Troy, a story that the Greeks knew and wasn't invented by Virgil, although came to posterity through Virgil's Aeneid, Babylocleon carries his father indoors for his own safety and benefit on his back, evoking that famous image of Aeneas. That image reveals Betelecleon to be the defender of the old virtues and not his father. The chorus here sings in rapturous applause. At last he has fallen on happier days. His son, as all right-thinking men will agree, has shown both good sense and devotion. His kindness and charm are so touching to see that I'm quite overcome with emotion. The success that he's had in defending his father is a mark of his filial affection. In offering political criticism, Aristophanes shows the way forward in a world beset by decadence and tyranny. And ironically, the way forward is by going backward. To escape the lustful grip of tyranny, conspiracy, and slavery, we must return to the filial affection and the resuscitation of the family. This is patently clear given that the chaos of most of the play pits father against son. In other words, family against family. At the same time, the decadence and degeneracy of Athens was brought forth by the commercial interests and way of life embodied by Cleon, who is instantiated in the play as Philocleon. And one could maintain that Aristophanes inserted, inserted himself into the play as Betelecleon, the true devoted son of Athens, who actually wanted the best for his city and his family, just as Betelecleon did. Aristophanes did pay a great price in accosting Cleon during his reign over Athens. Aristophanes was denounced by Cleon, and his critical plays dealing with the tyrant did not win the awards that he would later win after Cleon's death. But the wasps not only show Aristophanes' great political and social criticism and genius, it also shows his courage in standing up for what he considered to be the true Athens against the tyrants and the degenerate leaders who had come to dominate it. The Wasps, therefore, is not merely a great comedy showing us the reconciliation of father and son in a happy ending, as all comedies do, but it is also one of the great works of political criticism that ever emerged from the dramatic hands of the Athenian playwrights.